Hello my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. In this video, we will visit laminated veneer lumber mill as well as famous and luxurious wooden furniture factories around the world. In particular, we will explore the construction of the historic French wooden frigate. Debarking. From the bucking station, the logs are loaded onto a conveyor system and transported to the debarker. The debarker is equipped with five arms, each armed with sharp teeth. These teeth peel off the bark from the logs, leaving behind clean and debarked logs. The debarked logs are then sent to the slasher deck. Slasher deck. At the slasher deck, the debarked logs are trimmed and cut into two eight-foot pieces, which are now referred to as dealers. This process is facilitated by the presence of two saws on the deck. The resulting dealers are uniform in size and ready for the next stage of processing. Scanner. After being cut into dealers, the logs are conveyed through a scanner. The scanner utilizes computer control and photo interaction to measure the length and diameter of each dealer. This data is crucial for subsequent processing steps. Peeler bins. Following the scanning process, the dealers are kicked into the peeler bins. These bins hold the dealers and facilitate further treatment. Soaking. Once in the peeler bins, the dealers are scooped up by one of the two loaders working on the pad. They are then placed into one of the 10 baths, where they undergo a hot shower for approximately 12 hours. This soaking process softens the wood, making it easier to peel off the veneer later. One loader is responsible for filling the vats with dealers, while the other empties the vats and fills the mill. Roundup lathe. After soaking, the dealers are transferred to the round of the inferior, where they undergo additional preparation. The dealers are carried up a jack ladder and conveyed to the roundup lathe. The roundup lathe's primary function is to remove any remaining bark missed by the debarker and prepare the dealers for the subsequent stages. Spindle lathe. From the roundup lathe, the dealers are moved to another jack ladder, which transports them to the spindle lathe. Here, the dealers are fed into rolls while a knife cuts into them. This process results in the creation of long ribbons, each with a thickness of approximately an eighth of an inch. Clipper. The ribbons are then carried on three trays to the clipper. Each tray has the capacity to handle ribbons up to 15 inches long. Under the clipper table, the ribbons are cut into 4 by 8 sheets. 
The clipper system also serves to remove any defects from the sheets and reads moisture content for stacking purposes. Stacking. The sheets are stacked in bins, with each bin having a different moisture source. Proper stacking is crucial for the subsequent drying process. The sheets are organized and arranged in the bins, ready for further treatment. Dryer. Once stacked, the sheets are loaded onto the dryer. The dryer has three lifts and the sheets are placed onto them. There are four different moisture sorts available for the sheets. Heavy SAP, SAP Light, and Heart. The sheets are dried at an average temperature of 400 degrees Fahrenheit, with each sheet taking approximately three and a half minutes to move from one end of the dryer to the other. MetroGuard and moisture content. After drying, the sheets pass through a machine called the MetroGuard. This machine determines the density or strain of each sheet. The sheets are then scanned again to check for moisture content. The combination of strength and moisture content determines the grading of the sheets. Sheets that meet the quality standards for plywood grades are selected for further processing, while lesser grades are sold to Alberta Plywood, a plant owned by West Fraser. LVL Press. The selected sheets of veneer are now ready to be transformed into laminated veneer lumber, LVL. They are placed into feeders in a specific order called a recipe. The feeders ensure that the sheets are fed into the press in the desired sequence and timing. A glue curtain coats all the sheets, except for the top case sheet, as they move along the line. Layup and pressing. Further down the line, there is a layup area where the sheets are overlapped and aligned before entering the press. By the time they reach the press, the sheets are 15 layers thick. The press is continuous, allowing the sheets to be constantly fed into the press without stopping the production line. The press applies a pressure of 300 pounds per square inch hydraulically to compress the sheets to the correct thickness. 
Microwaves, totaling three 10 kilowatt microwaves, heat the glue and bond the sheets together. This process results in the formation of laminated veneer lumber. Cutting and sizing. Depending on customer requirements, the boards produced by the press can be cut into various lengths, ranging from 60 foot to 20 foot boards. This cutting process ensures that the final products meet customer specifications. Beam and header. The finished boards are then transferred to the beam and header area using a large crane on a trolley system. The crane lifts the boards and feeds them into the gang saw for further cutting. The gang saw employs multiple blades to cut the boards into desired widths, depending on customer needs. Grading and waxing. After being cut, the boards are sent to the grading deck, where an employee visually inspects them for defects. Good boards are separated from defective ones. Defective boards may be cut down to usable lengths later in the process. The good boards proceed to a wax box, where both sides are coated with wax to enhance their durability. Additionally, a grade stamp is applied, and a wax box coach tightens the boards to prevent any loosening caused by the cutting process. Stacking and packaging. Once the waxing and grading process is complete, the boards are stacked and prepared for packaging. A stacking operator does a final visual check for defects and verifies the proper application of wax. The boards are then stacked and prepared for further handling. The process of building a sofa begins by cutting the wooden frame components based on the design and measurements. Precision is key here, as accurate cuts will ensure the proper fit of the frame. Once the components are cut, the frame is assembled using a nail gun. Careful attention is given to aligning the pieces correctly to ensure the stability of the structure. The frame should be sturdy and well constructed to support the weight and provide durability. To enhance comfort and stability, springs are attached to the frame. Springs are strategically placed to provide support and prevent the sofa from sagging over time. This step contributes to the overall comfort of the seating surface. Next, foam padding is installed on the frame. The foam is measured and cut to fit each section of the sofa. It is important to create an even and comfortable seating surface. The padding is secured in place using a staple gun, ensuring it is firmly attached. Moving on to the upholstery, fabric is measured and cut according to the dimensions of each section of the sofa. Precise measurements are crucial to achieve a proper fit. The fabric is then attached to the frame using a staple gun ensuring it is taut and free of wrinkles. Corners and curves are carefully folded and sewn to create a polished and professional finish. The building process of Lermione was an extraordinary undertaking that aimed to reconstruct a French frigate from the 18th century using traditional techniques while incorporating modern technical considerations. It was a complex project that required the coordination of various skills, ensuring public safety, respecting the historical site of the arsenal, maintaining construction milestones, and training a crew capable of sailing such a vessel. The idea to rebuild Lermione emerged in the early 1990s, 
following the restoration of the Rochefort Arsenal as part of the city's efforts to reclaim its maritime heritage. The association Hermione, Lafayette, composed of passionate individuals from the maritime world, took on the ambitious task of bringing this project to fruition. With the goal of reviving a unique French maritime heritage vessel, the association opened the construction site to the public, allowing the adventure to be shared with as many people as possible. To reconstruct an 18th century frigate using period techniques while ensuring navigational capability presented a significant challenge for the association. Five years of studies and historical research were conducted prior to the commencement of reconstruction. The association made the decision not to construct the frigate itself but entrusted the realization to companies under the direction of a master builder. In January 1997, the construction of Lermione officially began in the Louis XV dry dock within the Rochefort Arsenal. The shipwrights spent three months in a vast tracing room, meticulously plotting the full-scale plans and creating templates for the various components. The building process progressed with the installation of the Kelson, a structural timber beam along the bottom of the ship, in June 1997, followed by the placement of the keel on July 4, 1997. The keel, a massive piece made of oak measuring over 40 meters long and 38 centimeters thick, served as the backbone of the frigate. Subsequently, the stern and sternpost were revealed to the public in August 1997. These complex structures, weighing over 4.5 tons, were fixed to the aft end of the keel and would later accommodate the rudder. Construction advanced with the installation of the frames, which numbered 62 in total. These frames, placed from the aft to the bow, defined the final shape of the hull. Each frame was unique and played a crucial role in the overall structure of the frigate. Throughout the following years, various milestones were achieved. In August 1999, the 62nd and final frame was positioned, completing the skeleton of the ship. In December of the same year, the bow was added, sealing the front of the vessel. Despite facing challenges such as the devastating Storm Martin in December 1999, the construction persevered. In early 2000, additional progress was made. The ship's interior began to take shape with the installation of the carling, a key internal structural piece. The first workshops, including woodwork and blacksmithing, were established. The construction of Lermione continued with the placement of crossbeams, which crossed the ship's width to support the decks. The interior planking, known as Vigrage, was initiated, forming the inner skin of the vessel. In 2002, the outer hull, known as the planking, was meticulously constructed. The planks were steamed and bent to achieve the desired curves, ensuring a precise fit. During this period, the construction of the helm and cannon carriage fittings commenced. The construction site attracted an increasing number of visitors, indicating the growing interest in the project. In September 2003, the Route des Tonneaux event marked a significant milestone. It involved the transportation of barrels and cannons from Nantron in Dordogne to Rochefort. The community came together to celebrate the successful completion of the carriages for the cannons, emphasizing the collaborative nature of the project. With the construction of the hull nearing completion, the focus shifted to the finishing touches. The ship was caulked using traditional methods, employing a mixture of animal hair and tar to ensure its watertightness. The caulking process was meticulous, requiring the expertise of skilled craftsmen. Once the caulking was finished, the ship underwent extensive sanding and painting to provide protection against the elements.
The final stages of construction focused on masting and rigging. The three masts, along with their respective yards, were built and installed on the ship. Rigging the vessel required a highly skilled team, ensuring the proper tensioning of the ropes and the correct placement of the sails. The rigging process was intricate, involving hundreds of ropes and pulleys to control the sails and maneuver the frigate effectively. After over two decades of meticulous construction, Lermione was ready for its first sea trials in 2014. These trials provided an opportunity to test the ship's sailing capabilities, navigation systems, and crew readiness. The successful completion of this monumental project was a testament to the dedication, expertise, and passion of everyone involved. The Sankria, a company operating in the furniture industry in Bursa, Turkey stands out as one of the leading companies in the sector. The production process begins with the careful sourcing of wood, selecting materials of exceptional quality. Once acquired, the wood undergoes a precise kilning process to reduce its moisture content and enhance stability, minimizing the risk of warping or cracking over time. This step plays a crucial role in ensuring the longevity of the chairs. Next, skilled craftsmen employ advanced woodworking techniques and precision machinery to shape, cut, and assemble the various components of the chairs. Attention to detail is paramount during this stage, ensuring that the final products possess both structural integrity and aesthetic appeal. With a team of 460 dedicated professionals, Sankria upholds rigorous quality standards throughout the manufacturing process. By supporting research and development initiatives in the furniture sector, the company contributes to the industry's advancement and strives to embrace innovation. Sankria chair products have been widely used in various industries includes the Hureka sector, catering to hotels, restaurants, cafes, bars, and architectural offices. Covering an impressive area of 23,000 square meters, Sankria utilizes cutting-edge machinery to manufacture approximately 25,000 wooden chairs per month. The company places great emphasis on meticulous work in the procurement, kilning, and processing of wood to ensure the creation of high-quality and durable chairs for its customers. Vimercadi takes great pride in the meticulous manufacturing process that sets their products apart in the realm of luxury classic furniture. The journey of creating Vimercadi furniture begins with the careful selection of the finest materials. Premium hardwoods, such as mahogany, cherry, and walnut, are chosen for their natural beauty and durability. These materials provide the foundation for the exceptional furniture pieces that will grace the interiors of discerning clients. Once the materials are chosen, skilled craftsmen begin the intricate process of transforming them into stunning furniture pieces. Every step is executed by hand, employing traditional techniques that have been passed down through generations of artisans. From the initial cutting of the wood to the shaping and carving of intricate details, every action is performed with precision and expertise. The handcrafting process allows for a level of customization and personalization that cannot be achieved through mass production. Vimercadi artisans have the ability to tailor each piece to the specific requirements and desires of their clients. This bespoke approach ensures that every item reflects the unique taste and style of the individual customer, resulting in truly one-of-a-kind creations.
Attention to detail is a hallmark of Vimercati luxury classic furniture. Each piece undergoes meticulous finishing techniques, including sanding, staining, and polishing, to bring out the natural beauty of the wood and enhance its luxurious appeal. Careful consideration is given to the selection of upholstery fabrics, which are chosen for their quality and aesthetic compatibility with the overall design. Meble, a state-of-the-art furniture factory in Poland, specializes in creating stunning home furniture using melamine and laminated wood. The production of the factory's furniture relies on high-quality laminated boards, known for their durability and resistance to damage and scratches. State-of-the-art panel saws are used to cut the boards into various shapes and sizes with high precision and efficiency. Cut components are then stacked using automatic stacking devices, optimizing the production flow. Edge banding, a crucial stage in furniture production, is carefully applied to protect the edges from damage. The quality of the edge banding directly affects the visual appeal and durability of the furniture. Boring holes is another essential stage in the production process. Meble's precise boring machines ensure that the assembly of their furniture is simple and efficient, with all components fitting perfectly together. For non-standard components, multifunctional machines are utilized, enabling comprehensive completion of all necessary processes. Before packaging, all components undergo thorough inspection and careful securing. Meble provides detailed guidelines to their staff on how to wrap each part, ensuring protection during transportation. The ready packages of self-assembly furniture are stored in the computerized warehouse. This modern warehouse management system allows for quick and accurate order fulfillment. Melamine board, also known as melamine particle board or melamine phased particle board, MFB, is a type of engineered wood product. It is made by combining wood particles or fibers with a synthetic resin adhesive and then applying a melamine impregnated paper overlay to the surfaces. The resulting board is sturdy, durable, and has a smooth, hard finish. The primary component of melamine boards is the particle board, which consists of small wood particles or fibers bonded together with resin. The resin used in the production of particle boards is typically a thermosetting resin, such as urea formaldehyde or melamine formaldehyde. This resin provides strength and stability to the board. The melamine overlay is a thin paper or vinyl sheet that is saturated with melamine resin. This overlay is applied to the surface of the particle board under high heat and pressure, resulting in a decorative and protective layer. The melamine overlay can have various colors, patterns, and textures, allowing for a wide range of aesthetic options. Melamine boards offer several advantages. They have a smooth and consistent surface that is resistant to scratches, stains, and moisture. 
The melamine overlay provides protection against wear and tear, making the board suitable for applications that require durability, such as furniture, cabinets, shelving, and interior wall paneling. Melamine boards are also relatively affordable compared to solid wood alternatives. It's important to note that while melamine boards are resistant to moisture, they are not waterproof. Prolonged exposure to water can cause the board to swell and warp. Therefore, it's recommended to avoid using melamine boards in high moisture areas like bathrooms or outdoor settings.